Hey everybody, what is up Dave? Coming back to you with a brand new video on the channel on a topic of something that I know quite a bit about. So recently, I got a new job about a month and a half ago working for a data recovery company. As you can see here, this video is about Drive Savers, which is a company that closely works with the company that I work for. I see this title and it kind of worries me because I don't want to be complicit with something like this. I don't want to be known for, you know, I tested a phone that comes in, figured out it was just a screen, and then send it back out, and the customer gets a bill of $700 when a mom-and-pop repair shop could have just replaced the screen for $150, let us say. So I'm going to start the video. We're going to watch a little bit and I'll respond to different parts as we go along. So I guess here we go. Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'd like to talk about a scam that is in my opinion a scam that is rampant in the data recovery industry and the portable device repair industry. It's a scam that Apple appears to be unfortunately complicit in legitimizing. And I'm not necessarily going to blame Apple here because I don't even think that they're aware of what it is that's going on. It is my hope that once this video comes out, if you agree with my findings, that this scam will be brought to light and will hopefully end. The reason that I bring this up so, what he's saying about Apple not knowing, I don't think that's entirely the case because, it's, to the best of my knowledge, Drive Savers and even the company that I work for is actually uh, licensed by Apple to do what we do. Uh, I know Drive Savers is for sure. I don't remember if we are or not because at least our location is pretty difficult to get to and one of Apple's requirements is that you have a customer facing storefront while we do have customer drop-offs our store is very difficult to get to and when you want to become Apple certified for your repair business the Apple representative that comes out and sees your place needs to be able to find your place I will tell you, he got lost. Uh, literally phone call after like searching around and around for 25 minutes in his car. Could not find where we were. I will tell you, the day of my job interview, I also drove around for about 15 minutes and couldn't find the place and almost drove home thinking it was fake. But I ended up finding it in the end. So let's get back into this is because in the portable device repair industry, there is a lack of trust between the customer and the technician. And dare I say it, in almost any industry, there is a lack of trust between the customer and the technician. The customer does not know what's wrong with their device. The person that does know what's wrong with their device doesn't necessarily have to tell the truth about what is wrong with the device. This is what I hate about mom and pop repair shops. This happens all the time. I will tell you that in a lot of the shops I've worked in, the owners of the shops sometimes will literally step in and stop you from talking to the customer because you're, quote unquote, telling them the correct information. And maybe the correct information doesn't make the shop owner as much money as if they were, you know, selling some other service. Like, for example, uh, this was fairly common at uh, the last job I worked for. The last shop I worked for, I should say. Um, a lot of the time, somebody would come in and they would be like, Oh, my charge port's just not working. Like, I can't figure it out. I plug it in, it feels like it wiggles a ton. And they have like an iPhone 11, so it's a lightning port. The very first thing I do with nearly every single iPhone charge port is grab a pair of anti static tweezers and dig around. 100% every single time. A good 90% of charge ports are just pocket lint, or I've seen pebbles, I've seen pieces of food, people who have liquid damage devices, which we'll get into in this video, uh, they put their device in rice. Stop putting it in rice. Don't even put it in silica packets. Silica packets don't work either. I have a real life situation where I literally did a phone today where the problem description said, put device in a plastic bag with silica packets 
and device no longer turns on. It took me five minutes with a toothbrush, opening up the back of that phone, cleaning up corrosion near the battery I see, putting it back together, charging it, and the phone turned on. Silica packets do not work. Until I cleaned up that corrosion, did not work. But, yeah, there's this lack of trust. It's like going to the doctor when you have a headache, and some places will try to convince you that you have a broken leg or a pinched nerve. It'll be something slightly related. So I guess broken leg is a really bad example. It'll be something slightly related. So if you're getting chronic headaches, for me, I was for a long time. And then I ended up getting the anti-blue uh, light glasses to wear when I'm looking at computers. And I started using the program Flux to give it a red tint to my screens, which is now built into Windows 11 anyway. But my headaches virtually stopped. I was getting headaches three, four days a week because I was looking at a computer screen so often Then I got those glasses. That helped. If I would have gone to a doctor for that, let's say it's a brand new doctor, somebody I've never had before. I'm not a health expert. I do know my own body, but I'm not a health expert. Those glasses is all it took to fix my problem. That doctor could have tried to convince me it was a pinched nerve. And then I would have had to go to like a chiropractor or some other kind of doctor. And it would have cost me hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for something that I fixed with a $40 pair of glasses. Anyway, let's get back into this. I'm off topic. Well, I guess it was on topic, but not really. And they can use that knowledge that they have over the customer to charge them a lot more money than what they would be able to charge the customer if the customer actually knew it was wrong. The customer has to trust us in order for this to work. And anything that degrades this trust is something that needs to be dealt with, regardless of the blowback to whoever's bringing it up. So that's like what I said with the charging port on iPhone. Clean out that dust, whatever. I would have the manager or the owner like stopped me when doing that because it was happening so often we weren't making money off of charge port repairs even though we had in stock multitudes of lightning ports for different iphones because we were just never using them because 90 percent of the time it was just clean out the charge port have a nice day in the end i think we ended up coming to an agreement that we like it's 10 bucks to do it if it's something that takes like five minutes so we ended up implementing that. Even then, I felt bad about that. But sometimes I even had customers just give me a tip for helping them because they thought they were going to have to spend 70 60 bucks for a charge port, and then they just walk out free. But a lot of the times, it was also just good word-of-mouth advertising from that, too. This is something that's probably a bad idea for me to do because the people that I'm going to be talking about in this video are a competitor. And I have a really, really high bar for when I start to talk crap on competition. I just don't think it's a good way to do business. I've never seen Apple as a competitor. I see them as a manufacturer. But when it comes to other companies in our industry, even when I do videos going over what franchises have done, you'll notice that I virtually never name the franchise that did whatever happened. I hope that by posting the video, a lesson is learned and they stop doing it. Unfortunately, in this case, there is a company that is breaking the trust of their technicians and dare I say it, even their trusted partners in such a horrible way that it must be brought to light, even if it lessens my reputation. So when he says breaking the trust of their technicians, I take that more as a thing towards myself. There are generally two major departments at the job that I work. There's the sales team, and then there's the technicians. I don't trust the sales team. I don't trust them to get the data right or the estimate right for virtually any customer they have send us a device. A couple days ago, I actually recommended somebody on XDA send a device into us for a repair. It ended up just being a broken LCD on their phone. And Lewis Rossman is 100% correct in this video. It ended up being a broken LCD on their ROG phone. And it ended up being an estimate of, I think, $300 to do a repair, which was, I think, way too much. But then again, we also have a very, we have a minimum. So I don't think there was any way to go below that amount. But I've also seen in descriptions that we told a customer it would be 200 to 1200 for this repair or this data recovery. And pricing is weird. I don't trust the sales team because a lot of the times they come to me and they say some of the dumbest shit 
Virtually nobody on the sales team understands electronics or repair or data recovery. They are just there to talk numbers and try to get people to send us in their stuff. What am I talking about here? I want you to imagine that you're bringing an iPhone to the Apple store because you have a problem with the iPhone. The iPhone still turns on. The technician opens the iPhone, and right after they open the iPhone, it no longer works. The technician at the Genius Bar refers you to a company that does data recovery because you want your data off of the phone that the technician at Apple just broke. When you call the data recovery company, they tell you that it's going to be anywhere from $700 to $3,500 to recover the data, but they can't really tell you without an in-person estimate. They need to see the device. You send the device... So... DriveSavers probably does work differently than the company I work for, but as far as I know, the company I work for is either partially owned or fully owned by DriveSavers. Give me one second. The motorcycles in my area are literally so loud I have to pause my recordings. It's ridiculous. I hate where I live. Anyway, his pricing estimate, at least where I am, a little bit off. Like I said, thumb drives, SD cards phones and tablets generally the estimate is 200 to 1200 plus the price of buying any parts we might need or a donor device if we need a whole device for testing sometimes it's cheaper to buy an iCloud locked iPhone 13 for us to get the whole phone and use the board as a donor board than it is for us to buy just the board or just the parts that we need we just buy the whole phone because that way we have the parts anyway but yeah generally it's 200 to 1200 for phones thumb drives sd cards and tablets it's more for computers and storage drives and raid drives and stuff like that obviously to them and they tell you it's going to be over $3,000 to get the data back from it. Since you don't have over $3,000 to spend on your data, you send it to an independent repair shop after getting it back from the data recovery company. And the independent repair shop finds that there was nothing wrong with your device all along besides a single broken cable on the screen, which requires nothing other than an iPhone screen replacement, which is something that they do at the Genius Bar that just so happened to send you to the data recovery company that quoted you $3,000. This is something that happens, unfortunately, on a regular basis. And I'm not going to blame Apple here because I... I'm going to blame Apple. Now, yes, the people or the salespeople at Apple generally don't know what they're doing as far as like electronic repair. I will tell you, at least in my personal experience at the Apple stores in my local area, that the Genius Bar people, I even had a job interview at Apple to be on the Genius Bar. The people at the Genius Bar are trained to repair phones, at least in my area from what I've been told from my friends who do still work as geniuses at Apple. So they would know if they ripped the cable. They would know if they damaged the device upon opening it up. Also, a lot of the times... A lot of the phones we get are from company partners. The devices that we get from those company partners a lot of the times are exactly the same thing. Just a broken LCD or a torn cable that they probably tore or they nicked like a resistor off the board. Very common on iPhones actually, especially the older ones like sixes and the 6s and maybe even the seven if you nick off a tiny uh resistor you can ruin the whole backlight of the display and then you think the device is dead meanwhile it's just put that resistor back which is like two minutes of soldering and you're good to go and you can get the d uh, data off that phone or with android stuff a good majority of the time with a broken lcd majority of android devices support USB-C to display output so you get a little dongle that's like USB-C to HDMI, or you get one that's got multiple ports, so you can do USB-C to USB-A and HDMI. Plug the HDMI into a TV, into the phone, plug in a mouse, you're good to go, and you can still get the data off of that phone very easily. Even if the LCD is broken, you don't need to buy parts or charge a customer for parts. don't think Apple understands their complicity in the scam, nor do I think Apple even knows that this is what's going on, due to what I believe is an ad hoc agreement between these companies for a long period of time. I will let my friend Jess explain best, as she has done numerous videos on this topic, and virtually every repair shop that does what we do has likely had a story like this in the past few years. Maybe. 
like I said, we even have stories like this that come in with us looking at stuff. Also, not everybody knows everything. There was some stuff about Google Pixels that my coworker, who is kind of my manager, we, we're kind of the same, but not. He's just been there for multiple years more. There were some things that he's already learned from me, and I've only been there a month and a half that he didn't know. And a lot of the stuff that was in our inventory, he had me go through, I think, last week, pull out every single Google Pixel and test every single one that was in current repair because there was something he didn't know about them. If you plug the Google Pixel in and it automatically goes to EDL mode, you are not getting data off of that phone, as far as I'm aware. So we, he had me go through all that. But let's watch uh, Jessa's uh, recovery here. Well, it's going to be a little more interesting than that. Damn, microphone pause, or mute. Be mad if this is just yet another just bad screen. Oh, man. I should have assumed that just because it had a drive saver sticker on it that it probably didn't have anything wrong with it. And I, this is my idiocy for not just plugging it in and making sure it actually had something wrong with it. Let's look at this screen. All right, Megan's screen. Ah, oh my gosh. Duh, they ripped the screen. This is what Apple did. As you can see, there was nothing wrong with this phone besides the screen flex that was torn. Now, Apple not replacing the screen flex, that's bad. Apple not taking accountability and responsibility in replacing the screen, I think that that sucks. But you have to understand, the reason I'm not blaming Apple here is at the end of the day, I've gone over this a lot on this channel. The people that work at the Apple store have no idea how to repair these devices properly. The ones who they hire for the Genius Bar, they generally do know how to fix these phones. Granted, yes, I believe every Apple store has a machine that takes the screen off. I, I don't know if that's true. I've been told that by friends that work at Genius Bars. But generally, the ones who take the screen off know what they're doing. Your regular employee is not allowed to do that, as far as I'm aware, and what I've been told. And very rarely do. Dare I say it, we would be crazy to expect them to have that level of expertise when they have shown time and time again that they do not. Who do I expect to have a higher level of expertise? The companies I sent the phone to that purports themselves to be at the absolute top of the data recovery industry. They sent this phone to this data recovery company, and here's what they told the customer. So they had it in their hands, they, you, not just over the phone, but they, they had it in their hands and they looked at it and they did whatever, like what's the point of sending it in? Like they're doing diagnostics on it, right? They're going to get a basic idea of what's wrong. And they said, yep, this will be a $3,500 data recovery. So your lock screen is of you and a cute little doggy. It looks like you and your husband, maybe? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> they told this customer that it would cost them over $3,000 to get the data off of this device that essentially needed nothing other than a screen replacement that could be completed by a 13-year-old. He is so right about a 13-year-old being able to do a screen recovery. And the fact that drive savers didn't catch this, I understand people have their off days, but like, Every single phone I touch, at least with my hands, I make sure I have a good screen, I make sure I have a good charge port, and I make sure I have a good battery. I, since starting at uh, the company I work for, I have been slowly organizing our part shelves and making bins specifically for the XR, X, XS, 8, SE, uh, Galaxy S10, S20, S21, S22, Motorola's, Google Pixels, 
I've been making bins and slowly testing the parts and then marking them with a Sharpie if they are good or bad. If they are bad, we recycle them. If they are good, I put them back and I use them every time I need them until for some odd reason they accidentally break or something like that, which happens from time to time. If I don't have a screen to test or I don't have a battery or I don't have a charge port, with the batteries I have the little squid dongles that I can plug into a power supply and they have a whole bunch of different battery connectors that I can use. Um, if I don't have a screen, I bring up that I don't have a screen and then I can forward a message to a different coworker that's in charge of buying parts and they look into potentially buying the screen or a donor device for whatever parts I need or whatever. It's I've been making sure at least that I'm organized and able to do my job 100% the correct way. I understand people have their off days, but nobody, and this is, goes back to the sales team not understanding electronics, and maybe even not reading the notes. When I put notes, I'm one of the most descriptive people on the planet for my notes about my repair process. And I've been thanked time and time again by the t sales team over just this last month and a half for how descriptive my notes are because they can better tell the customer how the repair went. That screen replacement could also be done at the Apple Store. Again, you may think I should be blaming Apple here a little bit more. At the end of the day, I'm blaming drive savers. This kind of reminds me of this interaction I saw at the airport recently. There was a three or four year old child that was misbehaving. And when he was misbehaving, he actually punched his dad right in the nuts. It seemed horrible. And after he punched his dad in the nuts, the dad actually punched the kid. Now, that is something my five-year-old would do. He would totally punch me in the nuts, although I would not punch my kid back. That's not good parenting. I would definitely be mad, but I wouldn't punch my kid in the nuts. What the hell? I'm not saying that you should punch your dad in the nuts as a four-year-old, but what I'm saying is that a dad should know better than to actually punch, close-fisted, punch his child. The child should know better. When Apple abuses the customer, they do so because, for the most part, the person working at the Genius part doesn't know any better. They can't find the bent pin 1 on an EDP connector on uh, an A1398 MacBook. They're clueless. But Drive Savers doesn't advertise themselves as clueless. They I don't blame Genius Bar people for overlooking things like that. I do blame them for torn cables and things that could be potentially their fault. Themselves as a company that knows what they're doing and is going to treat you properly. And their idea of treating you properly is telling you that when all you need is a screen replacement on your device to get everything back, that it's going to be $3,000. Apple doesn't know any better, but Drive Savers does. With Again, it's probably the sales team. It's definitely not the technicians, it's probably the sales team. Knowledge comes power, and with power comes responsibility. We have power over our customers, and in my opinion, we should not be abusing the power we have over our customers in the way that Drive Savers is doing. So your lock screen is of you and a cute little doggy. It looks like you and your husband, maybe? Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> that, oh my goodness, yes. That's the sound of somebody's heart attack stopping. That is the sound that I work in this industry for. That is why after 15 years of going through the muck that I will happily continue marching forward and doing what I do. This is why I miss working in the storefront and why I miss doing repairs rather than data recovery. Data recovery, generally, I take the phone, put it back together, with its broken parts, but we got the data and we send the phone back to them or they have us recycle it. Repairs, though, I'm making it work again as it should. And I still have not gotten over... It's been a month and a half, almost two months. I still have not gotten over... I'm putting this back together with broken parts. Or, like, I've even watched my coworker. Like, if we have to separate the phone boards on a lot of the newer iPhones for whatever repair, they don't even solder the boards back together. And that bothers me. I make sure I do it. The first time that I ever had a customer actually run up to me and give me a giant hug because I saved them over $2,000 is what makes this industry worth it. 
And that's what Jessa Jones did for this customer. The reason that this customer is put in that stressful place to begin with is because Apple broke something. But more importantly, there was a company out there that decided to take advantage of that customer and their time of need and to take advantage of the trust that was placed in them as a result of the referral that they had from Apple. And I believe firmly at this point in time, that trust and that referral needs to end. If Apple wants to maintain their image as a consumer-friendly company, they cannot continue to refer customers to an organization that is, in my opinion, fleecing them without their knowledge. I'm not going to really consider Apple a consumer-friendly company. There's a lot of shady stuff about Apple. There's a lot of things I don't like about Apple, but a lot of that is opinionated. But there are some things about Apple that I just... I don't like it, and I won't consider them a consumer-friendly company pretty much ever. You bet your ass that when they quoted this young lady, they did not say, by the way, the way we're going to be recovering your data is we are going to be attaching a known good screen that costs like 50 bucks with scratches on it to your phone. We are going to plug it in, and we are going to do an iTunes backup the exact same way that you would be doing if you knew that the phone had a bad screen. That's exactly what my notes would say for this device. If I was given, let's say it's an iPhone 13. If I was given that device with a number on it and I look at the problem description, it says it uh, doesn't power on. The very first thing I do is I grab a good known screen, potentially a battery, and potentially a charge port. On 13s, I believe you also need the front camera flex or else it'll reboot every three minutes. I don't remember. Maybe a 13 was a bad example. But generally, grab those three things. Screen, battery, charge port. Take the phone completely apart just to mitigate any potential problems. Plug in the screen, the charge port, the battery. And I tried turning it on with the iRepair, uh, the iRepair DFU box. If it turns on with the DFU box, and I can see that on my computer, I'll go over to 3U Tools and click Exit Recovery to try to boot the device. If the device boots and I can see their lock screen, I know it was either the battery, the charge port, or the screen. That's when I put the phone back together, and I just throw the screen in. The new good known screen, I throw that on there, and it's good. They are not being honest. I am happy to be honest with my customers. What I did on your device is run a jumper wire under a CD3217. I replace an ISL9240 to restore P. Also, at times we do send things to Lewis Rossman. Uh, there was a MacBook that we sent to him, I think, my second week because we didn't have the stencil for the CPUs. And. We had to send it to him. He did a CPU swap on it. I don't know if we've gotten it back yet or if it was successful. Some MacBooks are very temperamental. But sometimes we send him stuff. So I don't know if competitor is the right word. If we're working with him for some things. I don't know. I'm sure it's a business to business pricing too. But whatever. Back into this. G3 hot. I am happy to be honest about what it is that I'm doing at my business because I don't believe that I am screwing people. I bet my balls. I bet my cat. I bet my health. I bet my future. And I bet my family that Drive Savers never tells the customer what is actually wrong with the phone when there's nothing wrong with it but a charge port or a screen and they're quoting $3,000. Again, that goes back to either lazy technician or bad salesperson. The sales team does get commissions, as far as I'm aware, off of sales of repairs and stuff like that. Or data recoveries, I guess. I need to stop thinking repairs, man. As far as I'm aware, they get commission. Also, technicians, I believe, the ones that are salaried also get commission off of their data recoveries. So, and even then, our company partners, like a repair shop in California, even though I'm based in Ohio... That repair shop gets a cut for referring somebody to us. So and there's a lot of money floating around. There are some things I really don't like about how the business works, but I'm not in control of that, so there's no point in me generally bringing it up. But yeah, it's either lazy salesperson or terrible salesperson trying to line their pockets, which they do a very good job of 
keeping track generally, at least where I work, that the sales team isn't doing that. Or terrible technician that's not giving really good notes. Or just didn't test the thing properly and was being lazy about getting through devices quickly. And the reason this is a problem is because this is not something that has only happened once or twice or three or ten or a hundred times. It has happened many more than that. Many of my trusted colleagues in this industry, when we talk shop and share stories that they have customers that were quoted one to three thousand dollars by drive savers, and the way they fixed the customer phone was they took a dental pick and they picked lint out of the charge port, or they replaced the charge port, or they replaced the screen, and it turned on, and it worked. This is systemic, and this is something that's happening on a regular basis. And every single day that this is allowed to happen, it damages the reputation of two people. A, Apple, for referring the customer to drive savers to get fleeced, and B, the entire repair industry as a whole. I don't even mean just data recovery. I don't even mean just independent repair. If a company is allowed to continue doing this that has a great reputation, it is not only going to hurt the reputation of independence, because we are technicians just like drive savers are technicians, it's also going to hurt Apple's reputation as well. If Apple tells a customer that literally needed nothing other than a one or a $200 screen repair, that they need to go to a $3,000 data recovery company, that hurts the reputation of Apple. It makes it look like Apple was trying to rip that customer off when I don't think that was the case. I Apple definitely knows how drive savers works. It's going to be up to the genius bar person or whoever took that phone apart or that computer apart that maybe they damaged it. Sure, maybe they don't realize they damaged it. But at least on a phone or something like that, they should be able to know or inspect the cables. And they're just working too quickly or lazily. There's really no point in continuing this video because he kind of just reiterates things over and over and over again, which obviously that's, you know, that's how Lewis Rossman's videos work sometimes. Um, but yeah, long story short, any device I put my hands on that I am in charge of, I will always test with a good known screen, I will always test with a good known battery, and I will always test with at least a good known charge board. I try not to be lazy about it. I, If I don't have the part, I try to get it ordered. If we can't get it ordered for some reason, I've even already brought devices from home to test a device at work. We had somebody send in an HTC One M7. I had one at home that was a good known working phone, took it to work, took it apart, used my own personal parts to get the stuff off of that phone. Should I not do that? Probably not. But did I go above and beyond? Yes. So, realistically, I do not agree with the way Drive Savers is doing things. Although I do believe their name is on my paychecks. Although I need to double check on that. But, as far as I'm aware, that's either a salesperson being dirty or a lazy technician who didn't put good enough notes. I'm not disagreeing with Lewis Rossman. I don't think it's right either. I'm just trying to shed some light on to why or how this is happening. So I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know this is a long one. Uh, if you made it all the way to the end of the video and you want more rant style videos or just things that I know a lot about and I can talk and just inform you guys, let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.